old, new teachers, and so still going. <laughs> going good, though. So, I'm glad it's Friday. I'm glad it's Friday. Hey, Haida. Hello. How are you? Nice to see you again. <laughs> I'm a little sleepy. <laughs> now to sick. <laughs> awesome. Oh, best student. Hello, sir. <laughs> Hello, Zestov. What's up, man? Very well. I had the first one to one less. Old new teachers. Uh, and oops. So, With who? Still going. <laughs> going good, though. Don't say Vishne, I will really be mad. What? About last class? No, about turning me down and being somebody else's personal teacher. Oh, I'm not. I'm not. Um, I'm not doing personal teaching until I get back from maternity leave. So, yeah. Yes. So. Yeah, maybe. Just of us very happy. I thought. Who did you take this class with? Just of. I hope I'm saying it correctly. Um. If you wanna tell correct, is uh, Kshistov. <laughs> Kshist Kshistov. Yes, <laughs> but uh, English name is Christopher, and I think yeah, everyone can uh, pronounce this name. Uh, if Kshistov is right, it's not so difficult for me. Kshistov. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, sorry, but. Uh, Better. Yes, I did better. <laughs> you had your first personal lesson, Christoph, you said? Yes, I had personal lesson. Who did you do it with? Uh, with Mary. With Mary, excellent. Uh, Very good. Excellent. I wanted to choose somebody to see me with fresh eye. I don't know is the same expression in English. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Mm hmm Somebody with, with fresh eyes. Mm hmm Yep, absolutely. Good. Good, good. Servit, have you had yours yet? Yes, twice. Twice. Oh wow. Wow. How 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 is it happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how'd you get how'd you have one twice? Uh because we I took the first one before the oh, yeah. change a little bit a few days ago. Mm-hmm. So it's been Who's your personal teacher? Joe. Joe. Nice. Yes. Nice. And Haida, have you had yours yet? Yes, only once. Who 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 was yours with? The same as the uh, sub. Joe with Joe. Yes. Nice. Awesome. Good. Did you guys enjoy it? Yeah. Sure. Good. Good, awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to get started with that, but Daniel and I decided it probably would be better if I waited till I get back from maternity leave. So I'll be starting that in October sometime. Mm -hmm. so. Why do I do you feel okay every time during the day or I get tired. I get tired, but other than that I feel good. So yeah. But um, just tired and uncomfortable, you know. This wow. belly is mm -hmm. quite large, <laughs> so yes. so I do get uncomfortable. But now I feel yeah. good. That's why uh, I said, do you feel comfortable standing up? I feel a bit guilty when you stay up there. And <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. Like I said, the longer I sit, the fatter my feet get. All the blood rushes down to my feet because I've got a lot more blood in in my body since I've got a baby in there. So um, the longer I sit, the more the blood stays in my feet, which is not good. So it's good for me to get up and stand and walk. So yeah. So awesome, guys. Well, um, we'll see if anybody else decides to come and and join us. So um, today we're going to talk about an old TV series. Um, yeah, MASH. Have you seen it before? 
Yes, of course. Yeah. And Alan Alda is the best. Yeah, Alan Alda rocks. He's awesome. So we're going to talk about MASH, and um, we're also going to practice our past perfect, so, which is can, can be challenging. Um, and we're going to work on some fluency, pronun some pronunciation fluency as well. So um, everyone knows each other, right? <laughs> yes, we know each other very well. We can yeah. skip the introduction part. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I won't have you guys exactly introduce yourselves, but I, I do um, want to ask you um, a warm-up question, so to speak. Nice. So, um, the warm-up question for today is, what TV show was your favorite as a child, and what is your favorite TV show now? So, for example, um, I had watched um, a TV show, let's see, I had lots of favorite TV shows as a kid, but I had watched shows like The Cosby Show, um, The Mickey Mouse Club, um, and a show called Kids Incorporated were all shows that I had watched as a kid. And now I watch um, I watch a lot of shows now too. Um, Modern Family, The Middle. Um, I think those are those are two of my favorites. So, Servit, what about you? Do cartoons count? Of uh, course. Then uh, you know. I am not the name. I don't. I'm not sure about the name, but you know there was a cartoon uh, showing a family which which is living in English. Yes, it has an English version and a Turkish version as well. They are living in space. They have flying cars. You know, ju Junior. The Jetsons. Yes, Jetsons. Yes, my that's my chart. That's an old show. That's a really yes. old show. It's yeah. nice. But now, what do you watch? Now, I was watching The Office, mm. and I watched Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, I watch Continuum. Lots mm. of things now. I guess I watched a few episodes of True Blood. Okay. And looking for new things. Maybe I will try the Big Bang Theory. Mm -hmm. In True Blood, they are using a very bad English. In the big, in which show? True Blood. In True Blood, do they? Yeah. I've never yes. seen it. Yeah, the language is bad, but the accent is different, so to get used to it, so I sometimes listen it. They say he do, and uh, they always say ain't I ain't do nothing. Uh, they use uh, they speak like this. Gotcha. Time. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, Haida, what about you? I watched the Japanese anime when I was a child. Mm. But I now? love the Heidi. Heidi in the in the Alpus. Oh, okay. Okay. N now what do you watch? No, I, I don't watch TV so much. No? Only news programs. News programs? That's good. Sometimes. I don't know. If it's good news, there's so many news programs that just have bad news. I like to be happy. So, I don't know. Uh, Christoph, what about you? Uh, I used to watch anti band uh, anti Cosby. Okay. Uh, they was called uh, bandies. What was it? <laughs> band bandy. 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 Yes, yeah, so these guys who was selling shoes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. You don't know this? I don't, I don't think so. No. Uh, uh, but the name was uh, 
I'm just married. Uh, I type it in the Coringa chat. Uh, yeah. And uh, now I'm watching uh, Big Bang Theory, Game of the Throne, uh, Two Broke Girls, uh, what else? Uh, How I Met Your Mother, uh, Two and a Half, and from England, uh, Skins, uh, mm -hmm. Doctor Who, uh, what else? Uh, and uh, my family, uh, because I want to know uh, two languages, uh, to, uh, to accent, uh, British and uh, uh, American. Do so you I understand uh, both. Do you like British TV shows or American TV shows better? Uh, I am European, so I like uh, <laughs> uh, UK. <laughs> Uh, especially some TV show I uh, don't know you heard about this Top Gear is about cars. Top Gear? Mm -hmm. My husband watches it. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's the best uh, show about cars. Nice. You like cars, I take it. Oh, I should take a look at this. Yeah, Top Gear. Yeah, my husband watches it. He likes that show too. Definitely. What's your favorite one, Shnei? What's my favorite one? Uh, TV series? My favorite TV series. Um, well, I really like Modern Family. Mm, nice. I really like Modern Family. I like to laugh, so I like comedy. Yeah. Um, there's a game show. It was on last. It's on every Thursday night, so it was on last night. That my husband and I really enjoy watching. And um, it's called Wipeout. Ah, uh, yes, we have it here as well. Yeah, I love that show. <laughs> um, I don't know why. Why do people laugh when other people get hurt? I don't know. <laughs> but it's it's a great show. I highly encourage everybody to watch Wipeout. It's hilarious. So I remember the the uh, UK uh, comic. Uh, Show or something. Monty Python, do you know? Monty Python, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to watch Monty Python. Nice, awesome. Yeah, I like. Yeah, like I said, I like Modern Family. There's also a, a new show. It's called The Neighbors. It's it's about a family that moves into a neighborhood in. I think it's like the out skirts of New York City and every one of their neighbors they're aliens. So I like that show too. It's just pretty funny. But I don't know. I watch a lot of shows. We enjoy Two and a Half Men too, Kristoff. I know you watch Two and a Half Men. Um yeah, I don't know. We watch too much T V, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> so um but it's it's okay. So awesome guys. Well, um we'll have a good conversation I think today about MASH, um, even if you've never watched it. So um let's first go over pronunciation. So the thing is is that past perfect can kind of be awkward um when you're using it especially when you're a non-native speaker. It's sometimes even awkward for native speakers to use it. And for non-native speakers, it becomes even more awkward because of the pronunciation. Um, a lot of times when native speakers use past perfect, we do a lot of linking of our words. Um, I don't like married with children, Krista. <laughs> but you know what about this? It's Auntie Cosby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and the, um, gosh, what's his that name? That was hilarious. Um, you have to agree. The dad in Married with Children, what's his name? <laughs> the dad in Married with Children, Ed O'Neill, I think. He's the guy, um, 
he's in Modern Family now. So, but I don't like Married with Children. It's, I think it's stupid. But anyways, so um, but with Past Perfect, we link the words together a lot. So when you're a non-native speaker and you hear native speakers use Past Perfect, it can be kind of awkward and, and strange to hear them speak it, and it might even be stranger for you to uh, try to um, to speak it. You've heard past perfect before, right? Yes. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Do you think it's used often or not a lot? Mm, I think it's not used often. Yeah, it's it's not as common as other um, as other tenses, but it's more common than you think. But this is part of the pronunciation deal because we link the word "had," which is obviously a great deal of past perfect. Because we link "had" to a lot of the words in a past perfect sentence you might not even be realizing that you're hearing past perfect. So, for example, um, there's a few ways that we that we do this, but the easiest way is that we drop the H off of had. So it becomes like add. Um, and we link it to the word that comes, <laughs> that comes before it. So, and sometimes you can add like a light Y sound or a light W sound. I'm going to give you a couple sentences. So, for example, I had already eaten. Yeah, I had already eaten. Mm -hmm. The sentence, I had already eaten, becomes I had kind of like I had already eaten, I had already eaten, or I had already eaten, I had. But you can very easily recognize them because already and past participle of eaten. That's true too, that's true, that's true. So let me, let's have you guys, I want you to practice this linking idea though. So um, Servit, can you try to do the I had already eaten? I had already eaten. Mm -hmm. Good. Hi, Dad. I had already eaten. <laughs> See, I, we can, it can become kind of awkward. Christoph, I had already eaten. I had, I had already eaten. Yes, I had already eaten. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about this? What about I had who hadn't heard the phone? Who hadn't heard the phone? Who hadn't heard of the phone? Sue hadn't heard the phone. Sue, Sue hadn't heard not. the phone. Not. Not clear. So Sue had not heard the phone becomes. Sue had not. Hadn't. Yeah, Sue hadn't heard the phone. So I'm doing the best I can without um, a lot of um, to to type this, so it kind of looks, I guess, phonetically plausible. But Sue hadn't heard the phone, so you kind of link those two. So instead of Sue had not heard the phone, it's Sue hadn't heard the phone. Serve it. You want to try that? Sue hadn't heard the phone. Good. That's good. Good. Haida. Hi, Dad. I'm sorry, I muted. Okay. She's in shock. <laughs> yeah, she's like, uh, <laughs> you want me to do what? <laughs> no. Go ahead, Heidi. So I don't heard the phone. Okay, Kristoff? Uh, so I didn't hear the phone. Good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do a couple. Um, um, let's, let's do one where it's not really a gliding sound. Um, well, it kind of is. But 
What about, and this one's a little bit more difficult. My dad had already, I had, see when I have a heart. My dad had ordered the pizza. Your dad had already ordered the pizza. Yeah, oh, I, I threw that already in there and I shouldn't have, but um, my dad had ordered the pizza. My dad had. My dad had already ordered the pizza. Mm -hmm. Or my dad had ordered the pizza. My dad had ordered the pizza. My dad had ordered the pizza. My dad had <laughs> ordered the pizza. My dad had ordered the pizza. You want to try that, Servit? My dad had or whoops. My dad had ordered the pizza. Good. Good. Haida? My dad had all <laughs> my dad had all that pizza. Good. I, I it's not easy. Uh Christoph? My dad had ordered the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. So you can see that this linking where you drop the H, because what ends up happening is you wind up linking about three to four words together in order to get that sound, to get that gliding linking sound. My dad had ordered the pizza. Um, you have to kind of keep the flow going, which becomes awkward. Um, Sue hadn't heard the phone. Um, I had already eaten. So, yeah. It becomes a little tactless. I've noticed that pronunciation of all of us, in pronunciation of all of us, the real word, like order, heard, mm -hmm. wasn't so clear. It becomes. Like yeah. Medicine. Yeah, it, it, it isn't as clear when you start that linking. My dad had ordered the pizza. It, it all kind of starts to kind of run together. Is that what you're hearing, Servit? It runs together and also become because it becomes like a tongue twist a little bit more. Our pronunciation is also gets worse a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not so clear, not like yours, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it it takes practice. It does um, because they're awkward sounds to link together. So it is more difficult for you to maintain proper pronunciation and still be. Um, clear at the same time. Um, I had already eaten. Um, Sue hadn't heard the phone. My dad had ordered pizza. Um, my sister hadn't done her homework. Um, so keep this in mind when we're practicing with Past Perfect as we go through the lesson and practice your pronunciation with linking the had not or had with your subject, basically. Um, and remember that usually with the linking, you're gonna drop you're gonna drop that H sound. This is what's gonna wind up happening. Any questions on that? Which one is more common? Just dropping the H or just saying the apostrophe D like I would, you know, the same the same contraction. I'd I'd already ordered the pizza or I had already ordered the pizza well I'd is, it, I'd is I had so yes. I'd already ordered the pizza or I'd already eaten or I'd ordered the pizza um, do you usually say I had ordered the pizza or I had ordered the pizza I had ordered the pizza <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd ordered the pizza. Mm -hmm. That sounds good right now. Who wants to order a pizza? Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> me. Pizza. That sounds uh, fabulous. Tacos with shark. Say that again. I want to order tacos with shark. Sh shark tacos are really good. Yeah, they are very good. Mm -hmm. Shark, uh, like fish. Shark? Mm -hmm. oh. Mm -hmm. oh. Yes. Fish, fish can eat you. Yeah. Shark tacos, they're really good. Wow. Awesome guys. Um 
let's talk about past perfect. So past perfect is used when there are two events that happened at different times, but they're both in the past, and you really want to show which one happened first. Okay? So let me kind of give you the definition. So So the past perfect is used when there are two events that both happened at different times in the past, and you want to show which one happened first. Um, it's often used with simple past, either in the same sentence or two sentences that are adjacent or right next to each other. Okay? So let me give you some examples. My boss invited me to lunch, but I had already eaten. Okay. My boss invited me to lunch, but I had already eaten. So, my boss invited me to lunch is obviously what tense? Simple past. Simple past, exactly. But I had already eaten is our... Past perfect. Past perfect. Right, so we often use these together. Which one happened first? Uh, you had already eaten. Yes, exactly, exactly. So what actually happened first was that I'd eaten. I'd eaten first. What happened second was my boss invited me to lunch. Even though I'm saying my boss invited me to lunch, but I'd already eaten, even though the first event when I'm speaking comes after the... I just confused myself. Mm. Even, even though the second part of the sentence happened first, yes. say it second. There we go. That's, <laughs> that's where I was going with that. Um, let me give you another sentence. Or sentences. This is actually sentences. I thought I had bought everything I needed for the camping trip. But the night before the trip, I saw that I didn't have a sleeping bag. I thought I had bought everything I needed for the camping trip, but the night before the trip, I saw that I didn't have a sleeping bag. In this case, which one happened first? First. Which one? First. Yeah, the first sentence, yeah. So Nothing I was... Changed. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So in this case, nothing, nothing has changed. Um, yeah. Exactly. Now in this one, though, which sentence is past perfect? I had, I had bought everything I needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So in this case, the past perfect comes before the past simple. And also is is um, coming at the beginning of this two pairs of sentences. So uh, I see it's possible to um, put two in the two sentences. Yes, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. Don't have to be uh, one sentence no. um, with uh, two clause. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just want to you just it, you want to make sure that obviously that both sentences are independent clauses so that you don't have an um, an incomplete sentence. So that's really the deal. Our second one is a dependent clause because you use but. Well, the second sentence actually has a dependent and an independent clause. The independent clause would be, I saw that I didn't have a sleeping bag. That would be your independent, that, that can stand on its own. That's a, that's a full sentence in itself. I saw that I didn't have a sleeping yeah. bag. Yeah. But, but the night but, before the trip. Yeah, is, so it's uh, dependent. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how do you form the past perfect? Mm. Subject. What's the formula? Subject, had, past perfect, object. Uh, uh, yeah, subject. 
Uh, yeah, okay, or the past, past participle, which we talked about, right? So subject plus had plus past participle. You're going to okay. use the past participle of the verb before you have your object. The had is really what makes it past perfect, so to speak. So, for example, um, I'm going to give you an example sentence, and then I want everyone to give me an example sentence as well. So, I had worked for 10 years before I got a raise. Okay, so the subject, I, had, past participle in this case has worked for 10 years before I got a raise. Servit, can you give me a past perfect sentence? Okay. Mm -hmm. I had already swum when you just dressed your bikini. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I had already swum when you just dressed your bikini or not. Okay, you could say I had already swam. I had already swam. swam. Um, yeah. Um, you're actually, your sentence makes me want to jump ahead and actually go into um, how you can actually um, be you can because in this case it would it would be almost better to use um, what we call past perfect continuous. Yeah, yeah. like I had been swimming. Oh. And I had been swimming when you got and we would instead of when you dressed in your bikini, we'd actually say when you got in your bikini. Hmm. Um, it's kind of a little nitpicky thing, but. Heidi, can you give me a past perfect sentence? Okay, I had already prepared yeah. dinner when my husband came back. I had already cooked dinner when my husband came back? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Christoph? Uh, I had already done my job before uh, my boss asked me about this. All right, I had already done my job before my boss asked me about it, is actually what we'd say. So, good. Good job. Um, what about the negative, the negative form? Hadn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same, same construction. So, you're still going to have your subject plus had not plus the past participle. So, um, for example, my parents were mad because my sister had not done her homework. My parents were mad because my sister had not done her homework. Um, the last thing, like I said, is the pa what we call the past, past perfect. Past perfect continuous is the subject plus had been plus a verb with ing. Okay, so like serve it, the sentence that you were constructing, I had been swimming. Yes. Mm -hmm. I had been swimming um, when you changed into your bikini or when you got in your bikini. Mm -hmm. Do you have a question, Christoph? Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> no? Okay. Sounded like I have like been that. swimming for five hours uh, uh, before you change your bikini. You could say that too. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, or there's there's also um, it's it's really similar similar to past uh, continuous. So, for example, whoops. I have a couple examples for you. And this is similar to the sentence you just were talking about, Kristoff. I had been dancing for six hours when I passed out. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, it's used with this with simple past to show something an action that was in progress when another action interrupts it. So I had been dancing. Okay, you are you're in the process of dancing when I passed out. <laughs> Both of these were in the past. Which one happened second? When passed out. Yeah, passing out. Passing you passing out kind of interrupted your dance moves. <laughs> so um, that is that. It, and what about this one? Um, For example, I had been cooking for dinner by the time when my husband come came back. Mm, say it again, Haida. I had been cooking dinner by the time when my husband came back. You have to show time. Yeah, well, yeah, you you'd want to say something. Yeah, you have like, time. Yeah, you want to say something like I had been cooking dinner. Dinner. Oh, I can't hear you. Um, I had been cooking dinner for two hours when my husband came back. Mm -hmm. By the time, no, by the time when my No, because um, no, you want, you could say, now you could say it this way, Haida, you could say by the time my husband came back, yeah, I had been cooking dinner for two yeah. hours. You could say it hours. that way. You can mm -hmm. say it that way. But you don't want to put the by, usually you start a sentence with by the time. Usually you're going to start a sentence that way. So instead of um, instead of putting it in the middle, so I had been cooking dinner for two hours when my husband came back. You could say, but not by the time my husband came yeah. back, because it implies. Let's see how do I explain this? By the time the phrase "by the time" kind of suggests that. Um, how do I explain that? Um, Trying to find, figure out a good way to explain that. I guess it is something to do with until and by this ex example because it's a continuous action with continuous this kind of action we use until we don't say by. Yeah. And by the time doesn't make sense here. Well, you're you're kind of right there, Sarah, because it is a, the continuous action here is that she's cooking dinner. So by and that action is being interrupted. In no sense by her husband coming back. So by the time my husband came back, I had been cooking dinner for two hours. I'm trying to think, we use by the time a lot too. Like um, m m parents will say this to their like teenagers a lot. By the time you get your room clean, I'll have one foot in the grave or something like that. <laughs> kind of implying that it's gonna take forever. If you say, I guess that's the best way to say it. If you if you use the phrase by the time, that's implying that something is taking a really long time. So Haida, if you say by the time my husband came back, I had been cooking dinner for two hours, that's implying that your husband's been gone for a long time. Basically, that you ha that you weren't expecting him to be gone for two hours. Maybe you were expecting him to be gone for twenty minutes. Yeah, okay. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Likewise, until you're right, Chris. Yeah, Christoph, and I guess that's the best. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yep. Um. Good. Let's talk about mash. Um. Ah, where's my hangout? Where'd you guys go? There you are. Okay. We see you. <laughs> I can see you. I don't know what happened. All right, here is it. This is just a silly little Wikipedia article, just to um, give you a. I don't know. Is that copyright. Hmm. Does that link take you guys there? No. 
but I think I can grab it. Mesh. Is it film? 1970? 1972. Yeah, yeah. No. Why is it doing that? Okay, I found... I'm going to screen share with you guys anyways, so... Okay, I found a new link. It's all controlled. This up because of the because of stars yes stars ah uh, okay okay if you uh, copy the whole link not click the link I pasted in the chat it must open it okay okay so Let's look at this. I'm not going to read this whole thing about it. Um, has that, um, Servant, have you ever seen MASH? No. No? Haida, have you ever seen MASH? No. No? Okay. You so have to regret that. It's a great, yeah, it's a great show. So, and it's actually a franchise. Everybody knows what a franchise is, right? No. A franchise, okay, so like, for example, Servant, um, McDonald's is a franchise. Oh, yes. There's there's lots of different McDonald's all over the, the world, so to speak. Um, when we're talking about movie franchises or television series franchises, we're talking about multiple movies or multiple TV shows that deal with the same thing, so to speak. So MASH is a um, media franchise. Um, it was a film as well as a television sitcom. The television series ran from 1972 to 1983. Um, and it also had spin-offs. Spin-offs are, well, we'll talk about that. Um, there was an autobiographical fiction of Richard Hooker, which you can take a look at at your own, at your own convenience. But so there what the whole idea was is that there was a mobile army surgical hospital. Okay, that's what MASH stands for. That's the acronym, I think, is what it's called. And it was during the Korean War when the U.S. was in a uh, battle with Korea. And so what the show is about is all these crazy characters that work in the MASH in the MASH hospital in Korea and it's a comedy um, Alan Alda was the uh, was the main character on television Donald Sutherland was the main character in the film the TV show was much more successful than the movie and they also had a lot of spin-offs so spin-off is where they take like one character from a TV show and give them their own show. The deal with the MASH spinoffs, though, is that the characters who were in the series MASH, if they got a spinoff, the spinoffs were set at the end of the after the war. Um, but all of it is what we call black comedy or dramedy. All the characters were doctors and nurses, and the whole idea was um, it would show them practicing medicine, so when people got hurt in the war. Um, there was a show, Trapper John M.D., that ended in 1986, that ended the franchise. Um, but still to this day, the most beloved part of the franchise was the TV show. You can see that there were novels for it. That's what kind of started it off. Um, then there was a film that was made that dealt with, um, which was a film ap adaptation of the, of the novel. Then you got the TV show MASH, which, like I said, was the most successful. I mean, it ran for 11 years. Um, and the funny thing about that is, is that it ran for more than three times as long as the war it chronicled, which is kind of ironic. Um, 
this kind of talks about the different characters and whatnot. Um, some famous people. Um, yeah, Trapper. Yeah. So, and then Trapper John M.D. Hmm. <laughs> um, talks of, uh, was a show that was uh, 28 years after the events of the MASH film and television series. It was the first spinoff to feature a character from the series in civilian life after the war. Um, and it also, that tra legally, Trapper John MD is a spinoff of the film rather than the TV show due to licensing issues. Gotta love politics. There was also a play, um, IBM products featured MASH. There was video games, very, very popular in the U.S. Very, very, very popular. Um, and does everybody is everybody familiar with what black comedy is? Yes, a little. A, a comedy where they talk about real events and they talk maybe sarcastically sometimes, or just basically they talk about real things, not real events. Maybe something happened in the country and they make a joke out of it. Yeah, so the, and that's kind of what I want to talk about is this whole idea of MASH being a black comedy um, and see if you can use past perfect when you talk about this. Um, how do you think MASH impacted people's view of war? How do you think MASH impacted people's view of war? It's difficult when you don't see the movie. Well, think of it this way, Servant. You know that MASH takes place during the war, during the Korean War. Yes. It's a comedy. Yes. So how do you think that would impact a person's view of war? Uh, for people waiting for their relatives, to come from war can be a little bit relaxing, I suppose, because they might think that at that hospital, my son, my husband might be at that hospital or at, in a similar place, and if they see a fun environment, mm -hmm. so it could relax people. Okay. I think. So perhaps you get, if you want to put that in past perfect, you could say people, um, people who had been waiting for their loved ones to come home um, were relaxed by the show. Yes, mm -hmm. you could say that. Kristoff, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> we change the rules, I guess. I <laughs> like giving the example, I say, okay, you see, guess it's. <laughs> I'm not guilty if I have to talk about someone's feelings. <laughs> well, it's not necessarily somebody's feelings, but how do you. Uh, I cannot infer them. I don't know. What do you think? Do you th I mean, how do you think people viewed. Think of it this way. When. MASH was about the Korean War. When it came out, we were just getting out of Vietnam. Um, how do you think? How do you think a show like this? How do you think a black comedy about war would impact a person's view about war? No idea because yeah. I'm resistant on advertisement on indoctrination. <laughs> no, you don't. I mean, I don't know. I would think that people, you know, um, people had been so wrapped up in war that shows like this would kind of make them desensitized to to war. I don't know. Do you think that's true? 
do you, do you think it's healthy to make fun of something like war, like MASH kind of does? Um, we have a lot of movies about World War II, so... Any comedies, though? Yes, comedies. How I started uh, uh, World War II, <laughs> for example, was a comedy in Poland. Okay. Okay. And uh, uh, and how you know from history, Poland had a lot suffer from this war. Mm -hmm. The most but, uh, you know, uh, they say time uh, treat your uh, hurts. Time heals all wounds. Uh huh. Wounds, yeah. Time heals all wounds. Yeah. The most recent black comedy I can think of about World War II is Inglorious Bastards. Have you seen that? You would like that one, I think, Christoph. Mm -hmm. Inglorious Bastards. Brad Pitt's in it. I heard uh, they want to uh, <coughs> some movies about World uh, Trade Center, even in comedy. So. Oh, really? I don't know. That's a little fresh for, for people in America. I can say that, that might not go over so well. People are still kind of sensitive about that. Um, but uh, nowadays, nothing is insane. Yeah, that's no, that's true. That's totally true. Servant, what do you think? Do you think it's healthy for things like war and stuff to be made fun of, or what do you think? Yes, I think the movie might have been considered as a sarcastic representation of war by people who had been worried about their loved ones, as you said. Mm -hmm. So, But it also depends on character, you know, it depends on people. But generally, I can say that if people... In that situation, people might have been pretty worried and so some things can affect specifically Mothers can be so uh, sensitive, sensible, uh, sensitive, sen uh -huh. sensitive, sensitive about their families, or it's a bit emotional. So any kind of reaction can occur or erupt. Mm -hmm. I think that's true. I think that's true. Yeah, I I think it also. Depends on the person. Yeah. If you had been in the war, you might not be so so excited about it being made fun of. But if not, then um, maybe. I don't know. It also uh, can be used as a tool to show, like, let's say a mother is waiting for his child and she is upset. And other people can show. Look at the movie, and they are fine. We are talking to him. He is fine. Look at the movie. The the environment is here. He's safe. It can be also used as a motivation tool. It just it depends on the situation, yeah. people, uh, a lot of things. I agree. I agree. I think it depends. I agree. Um, Mash. Well, I have to go to. Um, past perfect. Uh, I had uh, finished my army duty uh, before uh, Poland uh, uh, went to a war in Iraq. Mm. Were you happy about that? <laughs> of course. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, Good. I was going to say, can somebody form a past perfect sentence about their lives? <laughs> Christoph, you just beat me to it. 
Uh, Servit, can you give me a past perfect sentence about your life? Okay. I had been I had been a goalkeeper before I did what? Before I had a computer. <laughs> Say that again? I've been a goal a goalkeeper? Yes, sucker. You know goalkeepers there are What's a goalkeeper? Uh, the player Defense is uh, working in defense of uh, uh, gate. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you can don't go uh, kick a goal. <laughs> oh, in soccer. Yes, in, in soccer. soccer. Ah, okay, okay. So you were. Um, we actually call it a goalie in in America. Goalie. A goalie. Uh huh. Goalie. Uh huh. You play the position of goalie. So. You had been a goalie before you got a computer? Is that what you said? <laughs> yes. And when you got a computer, you could, so you could also say, but when I got a computer, what happened? Then I, you I have become a video game player. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very nice. I love it. I love it. Um, let's see. Um, let me have you guys give me one more sentence. Um, can you give me, you guys think you can do past perfect continuous? Yes. Remember past, um, yeah. you have to ask something for a while. I w was working for. Uh, I had been five, working. Five hour. I had been working for the five hour uh, when uh, my boss came. I had been working for an hour when my boss came. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Um, Servit, can you do a past perfect continuous? Yes. The cat had been walking on the road when I was driving. Does it work? Uh -oh. <laughs> no. 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 You have to have some interaction in past. Yeah. Yes. There has to be. Yeah. So you could say something like. Um, You scared him. Yeah, the cat. The cat had been walking down. The cat had been walking down the road when I came along and scared him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could say something like that. When you use past perfect continuous, the two most common linking words that you'll use are when. And do you know the other one? While. Mm. Before. No, not no, not before. But by the time mm. In, oh. instead of be, it didn't happen really? before. It happened after. after. Yeah, exactly. So, for example, um, the police came. This. This is in reference to my neighbors down the street. Um, the police came after the party had been going on for two days. The police came. Here, I'll take that. The police. This is a true story. This is what I've been dealing with for two days. I can't wait to move. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, the police came after the party had been going on for two days. That's an example of um, past perfect. So, mm -hmm. past perfect continuous. Does that make sense? Of course. Yeah? Okay. Wow.
Past That's perfect is rough. Fun. It's 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 difficult. I highly recommend taking um, a few classes on this, depending on what your what your study advisors say, of course, as well. Just out of curiosity, Servit, did they tell you like what um, skill you need to work on the most or anything? Uh, he asked me a few questions and I said you are okay, just you have to improve your fluency. Fluency? Fluency. So you yeah. Well, you did good with that today because I noticed every time you were using Past Perfect, mm -hmm. um, you were practicing your linking. So, good job with that. What's wrong with the wrong sentence? Is it about two continuous sentence? Like, I was driving and the cat had been walking on the road. Well, Past Perfect, it doesn't matter if it's Past Perfect or Past Perfect Continuous, it has to have the had in there, not was. Yeah, but the first sentence had had. Like, the cat had been walking the on cat the road. Been walking. The, ca the cat had been while, walking. Uh -huh. While I was driving on the road. No, because you have two continues. Yeah. But this is not interruption. Then the cat had been walking when I passed by it. Yes. 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 Okay, that's, that's I was going to say the cat had been walking when I drove by it, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, same kind of deal. Simple past. Mm -hmm. Yes, remember that too, guys, with past perfect. Past perfect is usually in the same sentence or an adjacent. Adjacent means next to. Or an adjacent sentence of past simple. Okay? So, when I drove by, or I drove by, I just simply, I drove by, that's past simple. The cat had, excuse me, the cat had been walking is past perfect. Mm -hmm. Then you add that when in there. The cat had been walking when I drove by. And you've got a past perfect sentence. Make sense? Yes. When I, when I say it uh, the other way, like I was driving, does it uh, make a different sense or it just doesn't make any sense? You, know, you think something else? Or two events maybe unrelated? Two unrelated events? Does it sound like it, this? Or just yeah, if you're, if you're saying like the cat had been walking when I was driving that doesn't really that doesn't really make much sense. This uh, way you can use uh, to see uh, uh, past uh, progressive. Mm -hmm. Both uh, sentences should be in uh, past pro progressive. Mm -hmm. mm. So I was uh, driving and Cad was uh, walking. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh, thank you. Mm, nice. Christoph, you're getting good. What they tell you to work on? Because uh, this is math. I was good uh, in... Uh, I learned German too. Ah. <laughs> and uh, they, they, has, uh, they has more hard grammar than English. Gotcha. Gotcha. The problem with English is there's always exceptions to the rule, too, which makes it impossible. Yes, but uh, grammar is pretty clear. It's not as exception like, uh, you know, with uh, some uh, pronunciation or uh, conjugation or something like this. Yeah, the only thing is, is that with English we have so many, like, idiomatic expressions or um, different ways of saying things that that are considered acceptable even if they're not grammatically correct isn't that it can become confusing so you have a lot of roots uh, yeah. you, that we break <laughs> no no roots I have uh, roots of words Root. oh, roots roots of words yes yes, yes. 
That's we have uh, less uh, <laughs> in Polish. We have uh, less uh, roots of word, but we have more sophisticated prefixes and suffixes. So we we have the same word uh, root word, and we can and. Uh, if I want to say something in English, I have to fork to two ideas sometimes because uh, you don't use this root to overword. Gotcha. Like uh, you have leader uh, and uh, headquarters. Uh, lead is uh, from uh, Greece. Yes, uh, and mean uh, head too, and you have head like head, <laughs> and you yeah. have headquarters. For yeah. me, it's uh, like uh, one root word, and I don't have to. And uh, if I learn English, I have to fork. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we. Um, I had my last when we were playing Jeopardy earlier. Victor asked me why we don't. Why do Americans not use the metric system like everybody else? And it's like, I don't know. <laughs> we like to be complicated, I guess. I don't know. It's just how it is. And we like to be difficult. So, but awesome, guys. Um, I have to go plan some lessons for next week for you guys um, before Daniel kills me. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm behind. So. I don't think so. Yeah. Oh, so I promised him I would have have them done before four o'clock because I have to train some teachers at four. So, um, I how many new teachers we can expect? Um, seven. Wow. Wow. Do you have a seat? You can. You should train me as well. <laughs> I also want to be a teacher. You guys are you guys are doing good. I'm impressed. I'm very impressed with your knowledge. You guys are both very very knowledgeable. So when it comes to the grammar and whatnot, so um, which is nice because everyone can help everybody out. So um, I will be back on Monday. Monday. Let's see. Monday we have Hangman at eleven. We're gonna do idioms. And then at two, we're going to do plurals and quantifiers and talk about a scary movie called The Conjuring that's very popular. I hear first time. Have you heard about it, Christoph? No, I didn't have. How you know I don't have TV set, so. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> well, it's, this movie has gotten a lot of buzz in the U.S. It's supposed to be absolutely terrifying. I don't think I'll be seeing it. Um, it'll probably send me into labor if I see it. So. Um, but we're going to do plurals and quantifiers and, and take a look at that insanely scary movie. So, um, And then I'm doing another plurals and quantifiers. If, if The Conjuring doesn't interest you, 11 on Tuesday I'm doing plurals and quantifiers. If you're into boxing, the sport of boxing, we're going to talk about a famous boxer by the name of Butterbean. Butterbean on Tuesday. So, same thing. So, awesome, guys. Have a great weekend. And Pictionary. Yeah. Yes, and Pictionary. Pictionary on Tuesday as well. So, yeah. So, you can see. And then Categories and Second Conditional on Wednesday. So, and Thursday and Friday, I still have to plan. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. By the way, uh, I noticed something sometimes in this classes. Grammar points are some of them very easy, and articles are on like incredibly sometimes. like very high beginner grammar topic is like introduction to English, and the article is high beginner. So maybe. You can say this to Daniel or is, say that again. Is. What what's the issue? What I mean the first thing is the grammar point, like sometimes teachers teach yes, no questions, which is mm -hmm. like a beginner topic. 
-hmm. And then we look at an article which is full of very advanced vocabulary words. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a bit... Um, uh. Here's the deal with that, is that the article is just meant to get your brain thinking mm -hmm. um, so that you can t talk about it, so that we can have discussion on it. Yes. So we don't really expect you guys to sit there and read the whole article and understand everything. Um, if you want to try that on your own, that's great. But in terms of, that's why if you notice, um, Christoph, you were with me when I, when I first started doing this. I used to read like every single word of the article to you guys and I kind of quit doing that. Now I just kind of go through it as a summary just so that you kind of get familiar with the topic and what we're going to discuss. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you know, my goal for now is to improve vocabulary. So maybe then teachers can post the article like in the class description so that if students want can open and read the article before the class so let and, Daniel know let him know that that's an idea that you have for sure so okay. yeah let him know I think that's a pretty good idea as well so yeah for sure so we're working on um, incorporating a, a vocabulary element into class so just like we've incorporated the pronunciation into class we're also looking to um, incorporate vocabulary. So mention that to him, for sure. Because I've noticed a lot of teachers aren't focusing on vocab, so mm -mm. I'm not learning so many vocabs anymore. No, talk to your talk to uh, Joe about that too. Joe might have some tips for you to do like some personal study on um, on vocab. So yeah, I said this to him, but oh, you did? Okay. Nice. Awesome. Awesome, guys. And if I find anything, serve it, I'll send it to you on Facebook. Any, oh, like, awesome. Yeah. So, awesome, guys. Um, have a great weekend, and I'll see you yeah. guys. We will see you too. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.